post-classic era of Mesoamerican settlement, not, not, and this is also pre-Columbian, obviously, is like um, 1000 to 1697 CE. I'm going to be using CE and BCE. I'm sorry if that trip. Current you guys era up. and before current era. Yeah, I think it's common oh. era, but is yeah. it common? I okay, I see it both ways. Okay. Yeah, okay. but they're the like you know non-denominational, non-religious, way to, non-religious kind of scientific way to say that. So you know, one of one of the puzzles I've always pondered about is that it's BC before Christ and then AD after Christ. So does that mean that there's like a 30 year gap? in between the two periods. You know what? This is this is right up there with me getting yelled at for saying year zero. We should probably just leave that alone. Yeah, we okay. should. <laughs> <laughs> we really should. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So Payon speculated, based on the architecture of this settlement, that it was um, probably like closer to the middle classic, middle to late of the classic era, era not um, the post-classic era. And that was pretty much just the big structures, just based on the kind of archaeology. And we'll talk a little bit about the area in a second. Was, the building was kind of a ziggurat, is that right? Or was it not, that he was excavating? I thought it was just a pyramid. Is yeah. it just a pyramid? Yeah. yeah. That's okay. what I was thinking, but... Yeah, and well, there are 17 structures all said and done in this area, so um, most of them are sacrificial altars or grave sites. <laughs> right. Um, but this pyramid was a burial grave pyramid situation. So apparently people had actually settled this area since about 1500 BCE, so a long time. A couple thousand years. Oh, no, so they had started settling in 15,000 BCE. 1500 BCE? Fi- I'm sorry, 1500 BCE. And then um, the structures that they were excavating were from like 1,000 CE. Okay, so that, that was about 2,000 years. 2,500 20, years. 2,500. Yeah. 25, yeah. yeah. And then at some point, at uh, some point I think it was like this, this, this one structure that they excavated, they don't they believe that it, the tomb itself could have been actually you know, filled up with stuff and sealed up some, somewhere around 1,500 BCE? Yeah, they don't have a good date on this mm. structure itself. Yeah. Um, and pr- even more so on this layer of stuff that we're going to be talking about. But I do believe that, yeah, it was in the earlier part of mm. stuff. Yeah. You're welcome, everyone. Okay, yeah. All right, stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stuff. Um, and yeah, as I said, there were 17 monuments um, or buildings that have been found in this area. Um, most of them haven't been explored. I guess, you know, which kind of makes sense. You don't necessarily need to, like, visit the site of human sacrifices. Oh, that's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Be a tourist draw. Yeah. Mm. I was in. I was on the Isla del Sol in Lake Titicaca, and there were some Inca ruins on that. Mm-hmm. And there was this massive stone table mm-hmm. that was there, and I, I was just thinking that had to have been for sacrifice. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, there there are a bunch of sheep running around the island, so there was this little sheep like rubbing his back on the stone. On no. The <laughs> stone. <laughs> no. Yeah, I got a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> he was using it to scratch. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them were kind of sacrificial areas. Um, some of them are, like, within a city limit, so you can't really investigate that. Anyway, this one was the kind of pyramid burial ground. for it was the I believe it was, like, a more royal burial. They didn't, not yeah, the for commoners, they didn't usually situation. bother with pyramids and stuff, you know. Yeah. So in, in, in the 1933 dig, the team was exploring this grave site. Like I said, there are lots in that area but this was not like a human sacrifice thing this grave site um, had floors so it was a pyramid and it had floors in it yeah, and I mean, so this discovery was made on the third floor or under the third floor yeah the third floor down right where there were yeah. a few floors above it and then mm-hmm. was, so it was a subterranean floor yeah mm-hmm. yeah so it was the third floor down and it was kind of you know what you would expect to be found in a grave site for this kind of a culture There's, you know, lots of gold, copper, turquoise, rock, crystal, bone, shell, pottery, stuff. And in addition to a corpse. Yeah, and well, yeah, yeah, and a corpse, yeah. And then there was a small terracotta head, um, and that is our out of place artifact Mm -hmm. because it doesn't seem to have belonged there. But the they thought that the burial was um, 1476 to 1510 CE. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not BCE. Mm-hmm. CE. Yeah. Yeah. So later. So roughly about 500 years before the, the dig happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I guess of note, right, pretty well within a limit of like the Colombian era. Well, yeah. I mean, it's uh, 
This is when people are starting to explore the new world. Yeah, it could have been as as much as 18 years after the arrival of Columbus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could have been earlier, but... Based on this yeah. timestamp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, based on this timestamp. So here's what we know about the head itself. Um, though it was found in Mexico, it looks kind of Roman, um, or at least a little European to me. To me. Steve's making a face already. He's not happy already. I, I would say it looks a little Roman. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't... And as we were saying, like, I don't know why I have this impression... But I do. I think it's like the size of like a bobblehead. It's. I think it's small. It, it does look kind of small in the photos, but it could be bigger. But I, don't there's, know. I have no size reference, and I have no. I've not found any description mm-hmm. of it. See, I. I always when I looked at it, I pictured it more along the size of like a golf ball. To me, it seems just the the definition mm. and the the grains of the, uh-huh. the stone. Yeah. I always. That's why I kind of figured it must I have figured, been more of a golf ball size. Yeah, but, I figured but, around that size or a little bigger. But so yeah, I know. mean, we're all in the same. We're gonna ballpark say here. yeah. We're gonna say <laughs> ballpark. Ta-ta-da. Um, we're gonna say between a golf ball and a baseball. Somewhere around. Probably there. about somewhere around. Again, it's it's annoying because actually I looked at a lot of websites just to find one that says how big yeah. it was. I looked at know? every <laughs> single website I could that like I thought, oh yeah, this this one's gonna say no, uh-huh. none of them. That's why I went searching for pictures because yeah. I thought somebody would have had half a brain and put a ruler next to it. But, but no, no, it's just those two pictures. <laughs> oh no, all you get no. is somebody photoshopped it onto a, a image of the ruins yeah. Yeah. or a painting of the ruins, I should say. Yeah, because yeah. there's that no, was helpful. No real total images. scale right there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. People think that it may or may not have been a part of a full body sculpture at some point. Again, that seems like the sort of thing that you would be able to tell, but... Well, yeah, it'd, it'd, it'd be like this, the spot at the neck where it broke off, uh-huh. maybe. And that yeah. would, that's why more pictures would be helpful. Really helpful. Yeah, I know. Or a scale. Yeah. Ah! Anyway, um, about a third of the ball itself is its face. Would you say about a third? You mean that that weird pointy-headed hairy thing on top? Yeah, I'd say yeah. the lower third is a is a face a and face. jaw, and then the the middle third is hair. Yep, big hair. And then hair. the top third is like a hat, yeah, kind of thing. But it's got a beard too. It has a beard, which is interesting because the Indians over here didn't have didn't, didn't have beards. Didn't have beards. Yeah, the eyes are closed. It has a strong nose. I think a pretty strong mouth as well. I mean, you know, you're carving it, so you're not going to be like, ooh, no mouth. <laughs> Car- <laughs> you're going to carve lines for everything, right? And overall, um, I think the impression is like very Sever- Severian. The Severian king. Severian, um, which is like a very distinct time in Roman history where they wore their hair in this kind of not, like this grown out Julia- Julius Caesar curly do. Um, and then they had like kind of longer curly beards. Steve, okay. Yeah, it works. He's nodding and shrugging, just for all. Her I listeners. mean, it's it's that yeah, that's a, as best that you can describe it yeah. without somebody looking at an image. I was I was picturing it as you were describing it. That's yeah. what the face was. Obviously, um, since we're talking about a thing that there's like two whole pictures of. Go you find should them. go find one of those two pictures, preferably you, both. Use yeah. the episode title as uh-huh. your uh, guide to how to spell it. Yeah, just just you know highlight and you know right Copy click paste. search. Yeah, yeah. The thing to know about um, Severian, the Severian era in mm-hmm. Rome, is that that was actually like um, 200 CE, give or take, you know, 50 years maybe after. Mm. I think it was night. Well, it was 195 to like 260 something. CE? Uh-huh. CE. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, which, which would kind of imply that it's sometime, in a, you know, between then and 1500 maybe, it made its way over here and got into a tomb. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. Well, yeah. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. Kind of implies that maybe there were people over here from. Uh, <clears throat> From the you know the old world to the new world, a long time before Way Columbus. Way before perhaps. Columbus, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're kind of at theories. I guess we are. Dun dun dun. I know it's it's crazy that we're at theories. I'm sorry, but we're at theories because actually the theories are like the most interesting discussion part of this episode, to mm. me at least. <laughs> and you've got this broken up as always uh, into, into parts. two different parts of theories because I think that's what's warranted here. So there's two theories. Either this is like a Roman sculpture head or it's not. Could be. And then there's also the other part of this theory section is um, either it's a hoax or not, right? Because 
as our listeners may be thinking, um, this sounds kind of fake. <laughs> Sounds right? like it could be a hoax, yeah. It sounds like it's totally made up. Mm-hmm. Who finds a Roman head in a Mexican burial ground, you know, a um, thousand years later? Did you never watch Lost? <laughs> Actually, I didn't watch Lost. Oh. But. Turn off the computer now. Yeah. We're done. Done forever? And until you watch all the seasons of Lost. That's yeah, like okay. seven of them, I think. So <laughs> we'll see you in like a week. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Twist. I know. <laughs> oh my god. The smoke monster. Uh, what? I love the smoke monster. <gasps> Man and lock. Yeah. Ooh. So. So what? So the first. So we're gonna start with. We're origin? gonna start with like yeah. Where's the origin? Basically, okay. right. So let's say it's Roman. Okay. Okay. Let's say it's Roman. So um, that section's done. Okay. <laughs> done. It's Roman. Great. We all agree. Great. No. So there's actually been a lot of research done on this. Bernard Andrea is a guy from the German Institute of Archaeology in Rome, and I know that sounds kind of like one of those, like, um, you know, ITT Technical Institute (laughs) School of Design. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but those kind of, you know, not maybe totally accredited university places. But no, this is like a real thing that has a lot of really great peer-reviewed stuff, Mm -hmm. so it's a totally credible source. Um, here's what he has to say on this. It's translated to through two different languages, so I'm sorry, but it's a direct quote. So it's translated from German to Spanish yeah. and then Spanish to English? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh so well. good. Yeah. Are you going to read it in a German accent? Uh, I'm not, actually, but you might. Uh, I'll, I'll read part of it in a German accent. Okay. This result is about a colonial manufacturer. Okay, let's do, let's, do, let's do just normal English okay. Joe voice. Uh, you want me to read it? Yeah, would you? Okay. Uh, this result, uh, quote, this result clears up the doubts of colonial manufacture of the artifact and makes the hypothesis of Roman origin, among other possibilities, applicable. The identification of the head as Roman work from the 2nd to 3rd century AD has been further confirmed by Bernard Andrea, the director emeritus of the German Institute of Archaeology in Rome, Italy. According to Andrea, the head is without a doubt Roman. The lab analysis has confirmed that it is ancient. Oh, God, this is such hooey. Uh, The stylistic examination tells us precisely that it is a Roman work from around the 2nd century A.D., and the hairstyle and the shape of the beard present the typical traits of the Severian Emperor period, 193 to 235 A.D., exactly in the fashion of the epoch. Unquote. Yeah. Mm. So, okay. okay, so that's when that period was, was 193 to 235. You were pretty close. That was pretty yeah. close. That was good for just, like, off-the-cuff remembering. Yeah, so, so that means either it was actually produced by the Romans at that time, or maybe coincidentally somebody else produced it and just sort of mimicked their style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's small. It does look, it looks, I don't know, it looks Roman to me. I know that yeah. I'm probably biased, but it looks Roman to me. Yeah, I'm going to say you're biased. <laughs> What do you? What does it look like to you? It looks like something that somebody carved out of stone. <laughs> and Good answer. Steve. No, what I mean is, if you take ten people who know how to work clay and fire it and make pottery stuff like that today, and you said each of them, I want you to make a, uh, a terracotta head that looks like Joe. You would get five that would look kind of similar and five that would be wildly different from the other bunch. And it's it's all a matter of style and personal style. Because the thing that really bugs me is that the, the... in this region, it's not as if they were locked into a specific style, as far as I'm aware. In, in Mexico? Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there was a predominant style, but there wasn't anything that said you can't deviate from that. Like, oh, in, yeah. in, in, in Egypt, there was a thing where you had to stay within the style or they cut your hands off. Mm. You know, you, you didn't you didn't deviate from that. That while there was a strong influence to do that, it didn't require that you had to, and they they got very creative with things. So yeah. no, I see that, but uh, you know, one, one of the things about this one is that stylistically, it's very different from what is produced in that in that in area. In Mesoamerica, it is. Yeah. Well, but like as you say, it doesn't mean somebody can't just deviate from the rules and, and do something differently. And yeah, because I mean, there's, there's always innovation, but we should have found more works like this in the area. 
well, unless, and I've made this argument before for other things, unless everybody hated it. Hmm. Unless, you know, this person created a whole bunch and 99 out of 100 were thrown against the wall and destroyed yeah, they all because to the, they were terrible. No, they all went to the goodwill. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then nobody liked them. And then yeah. nobody could buy them because they didn't have money. Yeah. yeah. You know, and people so, use yeah. them as ballast in a boat, so they're all in the bottom. Sure. So that's why I, I, I admit I struggle sure. with the, the whole Roman thing. It bothers sure. me. Yeah, I mean, so the things for me, okay, maybe not Roman, but probably not Mesoamerican, because by and large, Mesoamericans didn't have facial hair at the time, or if they did, it was really straight, as was their hair. You don't see a lot of, like, kind curly of... Curly-haired Indians? Yeah. Yeah. I know. mean, basically, that's, you don't. But I don't think this is curly hair. It's totally curly hair. No, it's, 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 it's wavy. It's wavy Well, hair. you don't see a lot of Mesoamericans with wavy hair, either. Okay. I mean, I'm just. Uh, uh, okay. I'm. I. You know, we could we could go down that rabbit hole for hours and achieve nothing. I. I disagree. But I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> so the other, there's a couple other things that back this up from being maybe Roman, maybe not. At the very least, it backs up about that time period, kind of. Um, they did this testing that I'd never heard of before. This is totally new to me, and I have a coworker slash friend who is actually a trained archaeologist, and I was like, hey, have you heard of this? And she was like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds really interesting. And this is uh, thermoluminescence dating through testing of thermoluminescence. That's when you take a flashlight and you try to find the date on it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that works. Yeah, it works really well. Yeah. Especially Use the black the light to look for the invisible ink? Yeah. yeah. So as I understand it, basically what this does is it it measures the amount of ra- radiation or radioactivity that's been accumulated um, in like, the object in the object from background radiation, right? Yeah. Divided by like the dose that you would like typically see by year, mm-hmm. and that equals the age. And this only works on things that have been exposed to intense heat. So mm-hmm. terracotta that's been fired uh-huh. for instance you can age in this process kind of the catch is it's not i actually like asked our twitter followers to like explain like i'm five and liam did a really good job of this basically like what he said and i think this is probably true from the research that i've seen is that it's not like hey is this um from 250 or 450 bce it's more like hey is this something that what that was made like a thousand years ago or was it made in the last hundred years what what radiation do you know off the top of your head what radiation it is that it's measuring background radiation that everything accumulates well there's there's certain certain radioactive things that are measured like i can't remember what it is that went out when they let off all the nukes back in the 40s and that is something that is in the atmosphere and is measurable Mm -hmm. and you know you can tell how long things have been exposed to Mm -hmm. the air because of that so i was trying to figure out what it is because my reason to ask something like that is if it is exposed to background radiation my next question is how much background radiation can said object absorb when buried three stories underground well there's still background radiation even buried underground yeah i understand that but it's it's i would presume that there are going to be other things that are going to be absorbing some of that as well so it's mm. after three floors it's not going to get as much maybe not and the thing about but, and i don't know too, exactly what it's measuring so i'm i'm spitballing here and i admit it well but. Yeah, and, and the thing the thing the other thing too is that after this thing was made and fired and everything then it could have been moved all around, and background radiation varies a lot from place to place. Yeah, and, so and I, I understand I can that's see why that would the, make it impossible yeah. to really pin this. As down people to said an on Twitter, like, certainty. okay, it's pretty accurate, but you have to be absolutely certain that, like, that f- that was the only time it was exposed to heat was when it was fired, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, if it had gone through a different fire or like exposed to intense heat in some other way, that'll totally throw your dating off. And in fairness. The thermoluminescence testing said that this this head was anywhere between was created anywhere between um, 800 BCE and 1200 CE. Uh-huh. <laughs> so not exactly like a small range. I'm gonna let up yeah. on this one. Okay. Yeah, but also like realistically, 
we can accept that this is an ancient object, right? It's not like somebody in the last Based on like, this, it's not couple like, hundred years carved it and just like you know planted, tossed it. Yeah, yeah planted it. It's yeah. not. It's not a modern day hoax, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, do you so know? that helps to kind of satisfy. Sorry, that just kind of helps to satisfy for me that like it wasn't somebody saying, "Oh, this is a nice recreation of the Italian," you know, in the 1800s, and so I'm going to make it, and then it found its way in. It's reasonable to assume that if we are to believe the experts in this area that it is actually inspired by that period of time in Rome that it is it was probably that was when it was made was about that time mm. okay yeah now I, I have one other question that I, I never yeah. saw in the reading mm-hmm. which is did anybody ever analyze the material that this thing was made out of to try and figure out where it was from Steve they took two pictures and didn't measure it so there's the answer to my not question. as far as I know okay Mm-mm. okay I, and I, I presumed as much. This whole thing is the, the research on it has been a little lackluster, but uh-huh, it has uh-huh. been. Yeah, you would think they would they would scrape a little something somewhere. We so. should and we should clarify that's like from the experts, not from us. Yeah, like we did a pretty good job yeah. <laughs> researching within resources available. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. let's let's keep talking about this golf ball. So, Steve. Yes. If it's not Roman, what do you think it could be? Atlantean. <laughs> Okay, but in real life, what do you think it could be? I mean, like, there are other theories out here. Do you subscribe to one of those theories? Do you... Just... I do. I, okay. I subscribe to the last one that you have in this grouping. But <laughs> okay, that's there are, Yeah, there but are. But I mean, um... like, in terms of, like, Roman, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what you mean by Roman, blah, 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 blah. It's origin. You think it's the last bullet point on this list? No, I... I... Yes. That one? Okay. Yes, that one. The one All I'm right. pointing at on your okay, list. Okay, fine. Let's talk about a different thing then. Well, no, let's talk about Roman for a sec. I mean, there, oh, yeah. I mean, there is a possibility that somehow some objects from the Mediterranean could have made their way across the sea to the Americas. Agreed. Yeah. Can we save that and tell hoax are real? Because okay. I promise we'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, well? Yeah. Okay. I just want to talk about the origin of it right now. Oh, uh, okay. And then we'll decide how something like this could get across the mm-hmm. ocean or not. Depending yeah. on what you believe. Is that okay? Sure. Cool. Um, yeah, it, it could definitely have been, you know, originated right there you know, by a local artist. Yeah, so, I mean, it could have been Mexican. It was found in Mexico. It would explain the dating. The only thing is that it would be a pretty atypical style for that era. But, I mean, that's not unheard of. The other theories out there are that it could be Vikings or Celts. But more strongly Vikings because they were more, you know, seafaring, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they definitely, there's much evidence that they were here yeah. way back when. Yeah, there's some good evidence for oh, that. No good. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I guess the thing for me is the only thing that doesn't look really Roman is that hat. It looks weird. Uh, the Romans yeah. didn't really wear hats like that, but Vikings did. Yeah, they had those, those They steel had helmets. little hats like that. And, it kind of you know, looks like a fez, almost. It a little it. does, yeah. Um, it's kind of pointier than a fez, but well, yeah. A little. I, I, okay, it's terracotta. It's kind of like a fez. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> In that case, it's Turkish. Yeah, okay. it could be. But it's I mean, a Shriner's head. Oh, my uh-huh. God. No, but it is. It doesn't look Roman. That hat. It does look a little like the Vikings wore way more hats than I think like the Romans really. They lived in a colder did. climate. They yeah. did, yeah. The Celts definitely wore hats, kind of more like that as well. But you know, people in Mexico wore hats like that too. Like the Aztecs certainly wore hats like mm-hmm. that. And you know, this was at the very end of its existence. This was an Aztec settlement. So yeah, they, did the Aztecs kind of invade? They like, did at the very, out. very end. Yeah. yeah, and then they were like, "Oh, just kidding." We can't be here either. Bye. Mm. Um, so that worked out pretty good for them. But yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell. Most of the people who've done research on this head don't think that it came from Mexico. But I don't know. I mean, I think Steve seems to think that it did come from Mexico. Uh, yeah, I'm, I I feel like it. I just there's there's too many things. Do you things think Mexico? Do you think Mesoamerica? Do you think? I think in the region. Okay. I think that it had to originate in that, that in the larger region of where it was found. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, something to have made its way across the Atlantic or the Pacific. 
it, it's it's too many things have to line up, whether they have to happen so fast after the arrival of Columbus or just the perfect chain of events for it to have made its way there from some earlier unknown visitors. Well, there is, um, you know, I mean, the, the, the Vikings were here quite a bit earlier than, than yeah. Columbus, a lot earlier. And there is strong evidence that there was there was extensive trading all across the North American continent. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're going way, way back to ancient times. Mm-hmm. And so I could totally picture the Vikings coming over with some little, some little baubles and stuff like that and trading them mm-hmm. off to the locals and eventually it gets traded back and forth and eventually some objects will make their way all the way down to Mexico all City. Down. Yeah. yeah, it's entirely possible. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's kind of one of the theories as to like how it could have gotten there. I tend to agree with you. I think of, of them, I'm willing to say, I feel obligated to make the strong argument that it's Roman, but I'm much more inclined to say it's... Indigenous in some fashion. Or, or Viking. Some not Roman. So you don't like the Romans, is what you're saying? I love the Romans. I am culturally obligated to say that I love the Romans. <laughs> yeah. But... I don't. I don't necessarily think this is of Roman origin. Well, okay. yeah, and, I mean, and it, again, it could be of Roman origin. It got traded all the way up to Viking land. It's totally you know? possible. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. Yeah, I mean, it's the the biggest, Rome you know. did conquer Brittany. I mean, they conquered really far up. Yeah. And so it's possible that it came all the way up. I guess my argument against that, though, is that it's terracotta and it's little. It doesn't look like it's particularly hardy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's you also think not really would have dropped it eventually. Yeah, but it's also not particularly dinged up. You know, it's uh-huh. still got its nose, for instance. Mm-hmm. On most of the sculptures you see these Pointy days... Pointy bits chip off. They chip off real fast. It's still got a lot of the definition in the hair and the hat, even. You can see some stroke marks. And you would assume that if this was something that was being traded hand-to-hand-to-hand-to-hand, to hand to hand to hand, mm-hmm. it's going to lose a lot of definition just by being handled all the time. Yeah, that's true. You know? So I guess that's my only argument against it being traded on a lot of different ways, but that's also my argument against something we're going to talk about in a minute. Okay. So I guess we can kind of agree we don't know where it came from. Yeah. I'd say most likely it probably came from somewhere in the in, in the area. Mm-hmm. That would seem like the most likely. Actually. It would, although it's, yeah. it's it's weird that it came from that area, but yeah, I agree. But, you know, stylistically, yeah, it's way different than yeah. anything else. It's in the discount bin at the local Piggly <laughs> Wiggly. Yeah, no it doubt. wasn't because it was buried with like a rich person and stuff. That's where they got it was the discount bin at the Piggly Wiggly. Maybe. So, okay, let's, let's attack this now. Is it a hoax or is it real? Okay. Okay. Let's let's go ahead and say it's real. We're going to start with the, it's a real deal. Mm-hmm. Since we've thrown our chips on that so far. Yeah, let's okay. kind of just like keep talking about it being the real deal. Okay. So there are three kind of sub-theories here for me. One is the Joe theory where like some European group brought it with them. And I guess, you know, it could be Viking, could be Celtic, could be Italian, I guess, even. Yeah, I mean, there were people actually in the window b- between Columbus and 1510, there were people coming over here. It's, yeah. It's not, not, not just the big ones you've heard of, yeah. so they could have been yeah, brought I mean, over. Well, yeah, and there are people that we don't know of who made it here and yeah. never made it home. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, there's a book that came out quite a while back, actually. It's called The Last Voyage of Columbus, mm-hmm. and I loaned it out to somebody and never got it back, which is annoying <laughs> with the author's name. We're talking but. to you, Dave. Yeah. Uh. If you go, if you Google it though, it's about Columbus's fourth voyage, and he came across it, and they went through an incredible amount of adventures. It's an amazing book. But his ships picked up this parasitic worm in their holes. They were wooden ships, obviously. Mm-hmm. So even though they made it all the way across. Uh, while well, their ships wound up taking on water faster than they could bail, and they mm-hmm. finally had to ditch on a deserted island, and they spent about a year wow. marooned on this island. Is this a real story? Yeah, this is oh. Columbus's fourth voyage. Wow. And, oh, they went through some incredible adventures. Wow. you got to read this book. Okay. And so I could totally picture somebody making it all the way over here, making it out, and then, oops, our, our boat, our boats used Literally to, rotted we, out we, from under Yeah, we those. can't get back. And so they were brought, they, there may very well have been lots of explorers that made it all the way to the Americas mm-hmm. or made it never here. made it back. Or made it here and their boats were perfectly fine, but they didn't survive the locals. Yeah, they, right. the Indians killed them. That's entirely possible. Or yeah. they made it here. Their boats were fine, but they were like, let's just stay. Mm-hmm. Because they think I'm a god. Yeah. Because I have this beautiful flowing beard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so, See, I'm stroking it. Beautiful flowing beard. Yeah. You better start working on that before people can, you know, see you. <laughs> 
just saying. Yeah, no, I mean, that's kind of, that's, that's similar to one of the theories that's out there right now, which I think is a really interesting and compelling theory, and that is that this is just like somebody found a shipwreck. Mm-hmm. You know, that like some maybe Italian or Spanish ship was trying to make it across. They didn't. It was some a shipwreck. Some European ship. Yeah, some European ship. It had this among a lot of stuff on it Uh and it shipwrecked on an island and you know somebody was out there kind of pillaging and found this thing and 